we're just looking at a uh, a rank vote from Greek here real quick who's chilling with us in the zone so your pathfinder hit the beacon really early on right after you dropped and then you guys figured out where you could go next you see that the zone is pulling all the way south towards like market skull town water treatment this area and in general in king's canyon it's really easy to read the map while i'm messing with my mic um <clears throat> it's really easy to read the map because it always keeps pulling in one direction right so when it's pulling in this direction for the first zone and then again in this direction for the second zone it's probably going to end somewhere on this side of the circle that's where the game is most likely going to end 99 percent of the time on king's canyon it just keeps pulling in one direction until the very very last circle um so an easy Thing you can figure out is you can either play on water treatment here which is a generally safe location and gives you a pretty easy rotation into what the final battle would be otherwise you can maybe decide to play on the rocks up here and you should be in zone for a very really long time you can play on one of these compounds maybe out here or maybe out here um <clears throat> the compound right here you've got a lot more opportunities to probably get kills as the zones start moving because people are gonna have to rotate past you and if you go all the way south of the map you're probably way safer because you are away from where people landed and you're away from where people are rotating into the zone so that's kind of how you can think about what kind of position you can take and of course it will depend if you show up in this location um, on where people already are at this rank most likely no import key building is taken but you guys are in diamond now and you'll get the diamond three soon um, you're going to get into lobbies where you have teams that can actually read the final zone and they'll set up early and so those key areas are all going to be taken unless you move on that pathfinder information quickly so that's always something to keep in mind um, but other than that just make sure you start going south so that you're safe for the zone, and then you can figure out how to play from there. Yeah, I should call it their shooting, so far so good. Coming up from the left side, so you have a little bit of cover. One guy dropped and spotted you. Right, so you focus him. So far, this is sort of fine. I'm going back, I'm going back. Oh. There's Double probably not much you can do from the open area. Um, bubbling early is always good. How do you bubble find a Jibby? Uh, do you mean as the Gibraltar, as an enemy Gibraltar, if both teams have Gibraltars? Those are kind of different situations you could get into. Peeking poking is strong, PK especially, absolutely. If you can just like bubble uh, barrier dance is what I call it, when you're going, you know, you're standing on the side of a barrier and you're hopping in and out of it and taking shots when you're on the same side as the enemy and trying to dodge their shots. That's where the PK obviously shines. The wingman is good as that as well. The R9 is okay-ish at it and most other guns kind of suck at it. The m is actually sort of decent at it too. So you see it used every now and then, but it's obviously not as strong as a PK or anything or an EVA or something like that or a Mastiff. Um, that's the strongest thing you can do. The other thing you can do is because you have to, um, you have basically two barriers that you're working with, right? It's a dome, but if enemies are on one side so in this situation enemies are on this side and you know that the back side is safe because that's where you came from so your escape path is always where you came from by default because it's where you know where it's safe right and that gives you two walls to work with actually because you've got one wall over here and you've got the other dome wall behind you so what that means is if you dome early and in front of you then you can actually be in the dome for the fast heal and just keep an eye through that wall and obviously as soon as they step through you can back out and you can um, not just prevent any damage from there but that also puts them in your dome for you cover, 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 cover. whenever you want and if you've dodged their I'm shots coming, I'm coming. then you can probably get some damage on them for free and that is always very very powerful if you drop a bubble those are kind of the ways you want to abuse it if they're still a little far you can hold the front wall of it so it depends on whether you're kiting because you dropped it defensively because you needed to get a heal off or because you're getting pushed or if you push it offensively and you're trying to keep them out of your bubble and just using it as cover that's absolutely fine too because it's basically just literally a piece of cover you can walk through which is pretty great and the dome also lasts a lot longer than most people realize so don't be afraid to use a dome to fight just try to keep a track of when it's try to keep track of when it's about to run out and when it does you want to already be ready to get out of there right so right here as soon as you see the first guy honestly it's completely fine to drop the dome because you're third party right so you're either trying to see if it's this is a safe position to sandwich this team or you're just trying to get a knock and hoping the other team finishes them and get out with the kill point for free anything like that is fine or just poke and see what you can do and if you can't fight this which ends up happening um you might just decide to dip out but dropping that uh, dropping the double bubble early is great because you're in an open area right here right and just having some cover to work with is nice and hopefully you can get a knock before it runs out and if not then you can dip 
Right, so you drop it for the rest, which is great. You call for your teammate to cover. We talked about this last time as well. That's how you want to do it. If one person is rezzing, the other person should cover and they should call out if you're getting pushed. Exactly. Using the dome is very fast, so that is nice. Um, personally, just a very small thing now. Like there was a Jibby ulti on you, so most people can't really push through. Even if it's their ulti, most people don't actually push through it. They use it for area denial or for damage. Um, so I would have actually just stuck in that bubble and I would have healed inside of it where you have to fast heal. If you keep an eye towards the enemy team, you can see if they're pushing you. So as long as the bubble is still there you're not really under that much risk right you don't have to heal yet but then your teammates can actually just heal outside of the bubble and they're absolutely fine so what i want to look at now is how did you get caught in such a terrible position why are you all the way up front as a gibraltar as with that's your wraith's job right or and you're not only with a wraith you're also with a path who is the second best in the game at doing that but going forward a little bit and then being able to grapple back so why are you the one that's pushing forward that just might mean that you have to waste dome early and like then we, should, i think we should go there where exactly were they where at do the you entrance get or where? out here um okay so right as you drop down i mean a little bit before you drop down but for the sake of argument, we're going to assume that right as you decided to drop down, so you didn't have time to stop, he shot from here. So now playing from the back here doesn't make much sense anymore, right? Because you're basically putting yourself stuck in a corner on low ground, close to them. You mess up your jump, you can still go back to your teammates here. So I don't understand why you're trying to push past this ahead of your team alone as your bolter. It should have been Wraith splitting and not JB. Yeah, this. Exactly this, Neo. You just mentioned it, and that's what we're seeing here as well. This doesn't make any sense. Why are your teammates, also the two characters in the game that can scout up ahead and get back, why are they there and why are you here? Like, why did you even take this damage? Why are you even in this corner? That doesn't really make any sense. Because he's greedy, but he can be greedier from, from smarter positions. <laughs> also, blind bait. The bl other way around. Blight, blight, pain. I can English, dude. Welcome. <laughs> I'm gonna ult them. I'm gonna heal. So yeah, that ulti is way too early unless you're trying to deny them the push because your teammates were low. But it doesn't look like that's what you're doing because you're throwing for it. If you want to deny them the push, then obviously you want to ult close right here, right? And then you want to drop your domes for your teammates to She's use that fast there. heal. But that's not what you do. So it looks more like an aggressive ulti, in which case it's not very valuable because you're not really sure it's going to hit anybody or do anything. I'm, uh, there's, a portal right over here. there's no way I can... Okay, so also right here, um, the one thing I don't like about this move it's pretty small so you know i don't think you were gonna fix this anytime soon but just as the fact that there was an enemy right there and you can't see him anymore right here and he might be about to push into your dome with a pk right so we already see that you end up fighting him you actually end up winning but in this situation i would probably be holding that back corner to keep a line of sight on him or maybe i would go stand on top of here so that if he pushes inside i can instantly step back out of the bubble those are all options you have to try and play around that bubble um, but instead you just kind of end up going behind the wall and then walking forward so you don't actually know if she's you know, pushing you or not. And then here of course you wanted some distance because you dropped the low ground which is not ideal. And it makes sense for them to go on top. Literally if we go back a little bit to where you drop your dome and this is also an important thing of dome fighting is the other thing you have to be capable of is using your dome to buy time because Jibby is a priority target in ranked what i mean by that is not that he is um that he's super important to kill because he isn't but then rather that he gets focused a lot whenever a team sees an opportunity to focus at gibraltar they usually will because if you can push him he's pretty much the easiest to kill right as soon as his gun shield is broken um so something that you need to be capable of doing because you don't really have anything other than your dome to keep you alive is you need to be able to use your dome to kite one or two enemies for long enough for your teammates to get at least close to you so that if, if you do get knocked they'll still be there to trade off you before you get thirsted or at the very least hopefully you'll be able to stay up for your teammates to be there and back you up and that's not something i'm seeing you do here at all right in this situation you're not really expecting the wraith to show up you're not full health so if i were you i would want to buy a little bit of time for your teammate to get closer to you so that you can both fight here so what i would be doing is i would just be playing on the back of the dome and i would just be going in and out of the dome baiting her shots and trying to avoid actually fighting with her if she chases me i'll try to go around the left side and then if she goes out on the left side i'll hop back in on this side and i'm just buying time for my wraith to show up what exactly does kiting mean i've heard it the term a few times um it comes from mmos it's like when you're it's like flying a kite if you are like getting aggro on an enemy so they start chasing you but then you're maintaining a distance where they can't actually damage you that's kiting right so it's kind of baiting people in to chase you you poke, run away, heal, avoid shots, keep them busy, relocate again. Yeah, that's basically it. So you're keeping aggro on somebody, but you're not actually taking damage from them. You're just getting them to chase you, right? So in this situation, you don't actually want to fight her. You just want to buy time for your wraith to show up and help you out, 
right? That's all you want to do because you're GB or JC target. You're going to get pushed here and you didn't really see her coming. You weren't ready for it and use the dome to your advantage. So then you may as well just use it to barrier dance a little bit and waste her time. And then hopefully you can kill her for free when she reloads or if she messes up, if she shoots into your dome. But if not, then at least the Wraith can show up and help you out. And then you can avoid a situation like this. Okay, so you guys get caught by people behind you on high ground. That's not ideal. It's a shame you didn't see them. That happened. But your response probably shouldn't be, you know what, let me just whip around out in the open and uh, fight them. To be fair, you can get away with it for a little bit because you have this giant arm shield as Jibby. But in general, uh, for you guys as a team, this is not ideal. So right now, either your Wraith needs to be like, oh, I have a portal, I'm dropping it. Someone needs to call. We just need to run or you need to Gotta instantly be. drop your bubble right as soon as people are like oh i didn't expect them just drop your dome just drop your dome you could caught off guard use that dome to give yourself space and with that space you're gonna figure out if maybe the dome was a little bit too early fuck then we just gotta disengage and wait for the dome to come back off cooldown which is the case if they have a gibraltar as well and they're gonna dome after you obviously but if you get caught out in a shitty position that's where gibraltar is a, a beautiful man it gives you cover for free so there you use that dome <laughs> okay and by the way you guys did a great job there uh this team was in a dominant position against you guys so you just decided not to take a fight from here you guys disengaged and went underneath and then instantly reset up towards the high ground and now you are suddenly in a strong position against this team. That is very quickly, so I don't think they even noticed. So this is obviously very good. So if you if you have an IGL on your team, this is the kind of thing that if you get caught off guard, you want them to confidently call quickly, like everybody run, we're going to the zip line. You need that kind of one guy that's never scared to make a call, even if it's wrong, so that you can all do that together. Then doing this is great. You basically went from a losing position to a winning position, and now you can actually get a knock and push. So this is great. Solid stuff here. Did you guys take the enemy portal? Oh no, not again. Okay, so the enemy wants and didn't actually front it up on time. In general, if they take a port, you want to walk it. You just chase the blue line and see where it goes, right? It's never that far away that you can make it. Even if they just got the res off, the guy's going to be 30 health and you still get the kill. But again, going through portals, as soon as you get the diamonds, you should expect there to not just be fences, but also arc stars, thermites, peacekeepers, all that kind of unpleasant stuff. Quickly using, using the dome to um, loot here because you're out in the open. That's very nice. Sorry. Um, so you're on three kill points right now, right? So obviously this is a point where you want to ask your teammates how many kill points they have and you want to figure out if you're playing to just win the game here or if you need some more kill points. At this point, you're probably just playing to win the game. It's already top six, so you want to kind of get into that top three position and then you just play for the final fight, and which means looking at the zone here, which is already moving and figuring out where to go next. You guys should have rotated a little early, but as we saw, it's kind of what we expected between like water treatment and uh, the Skull Town market compound. So if you guys could get to a decent defendable position there, that'd be nice. You already have a team over here. You still have time now to rotate around. Can you guys kind of see that on the map? You can, right? You still have time to rotate around now if you want. And there's a lot of space there to actually work with. There's a lot of cover on that side. You still, I think, have a little bit of time to go around on that side as well. But that's a little bit dicey. So if you don't want to fight this team here, that's something they, you can do. Um, but at the very least, you should figure out if you want to actually bother with this gatekeeper. Right there. Because you already used your portal. I had him a few. Okay, I'm going. If this portal sucks, your team is dead, dude. <laughs> oh, why did you go back? There was no need for you to go yeah, back. You're just taking unnecessary it. damage. Okay, so... Oh, no, you don't did the zone either. As well, I mean. As well. well. I fucked up and went to again. Come back. Okay, so you guys have dome. Um, because you're in a position now where as soon as dome runs out, you don't have any cover other than the wall. Obviously, the first thing you want to do is scout around like, hey, if this dome drops, are we screwed? So what I would do is I would just climb on through that wall into your dome so that you can see where these teams are shooting. And you can also see if there's maybe a free kill you can going from there. If you can, that'd be nice. Um, starting right here. And... Uh, I mean, other than that, you got great points anyway. But I think you could have won that for sure. Because right here... You got your dome down and you're in a safe position, but most importantly, out of all these teams, the people that are closest to this next zone are you and the team over here. And then there's one team that's pretty much already in the zone over here, right? But the other teams, the team on the other side of the wall here and the team that are over there, both end up fighting, which means you're in a winning position. 
because you're the pe people that can get to this um, zone, you know, most freely while they're all fighting, get into the strongest position and then kill whoever's left. That's kind of what it starts looking like at the end, but you guys panic, don't have a strong position, split up, and because of that you actually kind of end up losing it because it ends up being a little bit chaotic. So right here you should have scouted the other side of the fence, you would have figured out that there's two teams fighting over there, then two teams fighting over here, and then hopefully you could have gotten some free knocks from there. But right here, like... Um, this is still totally fine by the way, you and your team just getting some free shots off, you have some cover from here, this is totally fine here. This is still kind of fine, although you shouldn't have jumped off the wall, you shouldn't be isolating yourself from your teammate right there. It's absolutely fine to climb onto the wall to get information there, and I would have done that when you had the dome because it was safe. Doing it late is a little bit risky, but you do end up doing it late seeing this guy, which is nice because you had to scout sooner or later not to see her. And instead of jumping over, just stand on top of the wall and start shooting here, because just like on this side of the wall, there's no cover, right? There's nowhere she can stand here um, that she can do anything, plus it just allows right now, let's say she turns around with a wingman and headshots you or hits you for 100 with a PK, you can drop off in the back. Which you can't do. Um, did I confuse you with Ovi? No, I didn't. Wait, what? <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Right, you, so you can jump off on the back. And if you jump over, you can't do that, obviously. And you just want to kind of anchor yourself to the side of your teammates, right? And I think you're going to end up jumping over again, which is same thing, same mistake. Oh, I wouldn't have cancelled my bet there. You had a teammate right there. Um, so what you can literally do is just keep running in that direction towards your teammate and have him cover your corner while you finish the heal. Quite easy. Should be absolutely fine. Jumping over again. Um, right here. As soon as she runs to the right, all you want to do right here is just get around the corner and then start healing or hold the angle. Either of those is fine, but what you want to do is you're anticipating her to come over the wall. If she does, she has no cover other than dropping back from the wall. You also have no cover, so if you make sure you have cover, it's pretty much you win the 1v1 for free, right? Because she's just going to be overexposing herself, and instead you run into her. So if she had a PK right here, you would be dead. On you, on you. Right here. Okay, don't have a dome yet. Would have been nice if you went for an armor swap. Still not using the corner. Yeah, it is. Man, and he ends up 1v2ing you guys. That's too bad.